Welcome to my first screencast on GeoGebra. I'll be making a, a series of these screencasts to help you produce the, uh, produce the GeoGebra files you will be required to do as assignments. So this first one is really just a basic one on creating an equilateral triangle. Hopefully you're looking at the GeoGebra main screen uh, on your screen as you view this. And there's a sidebar that lets me change the size of the window. Now the left window is the algebra window and the right window is the graphics window. And if you look closely at those toolbars, there's also some uh, down arrow that you can click on and off and to give you more options in both windows. And we'll be using those as we go through as, as we go throughout the screencast. So let's start by uh, creating two random points and which just doesn't really matter where they are on the screen or how far apart they are. That looks about right to me. And so we did these two points, are, one point is going to represent the center of the circle, and the other point will represent the uh, circumference, it'll be on the circumference. So we will take our mouse and go up to the circle tool, which is right here, and if you click to see the little uh, arrows on each one of these icons, well if you click on them, they give you even more options, and the toolbar is organized by category. So if you want something to do with circles or arcs, you would click on this, uh, this down arrow. For this activity, I just want to do a circle with a center going through a point. So my center is at A, I will click on A, and then I will click on B, and that will create my circle. Now here's a good opportunity for me just to show you that, that drop down menu up here in the graphics window. If you click on that drop down menu, you have a whole bunch of options here. For example, I can change the color of the circle. Let's say I want a purple circle. Let's say I want it a little thicker. So I can slide this, make it a little thicker. You can make it a dashed line, etc. So there's some nice options up there that you should get familiar with. For this activity, I'm just going to move on here and I'm going to create the radius for the circle. So I already know the center and I know the point on the circumference. I will use the line segment tool to make the radius. That is under the line uh, icon. So click down that down arrow and you want a segment between two points. Click on the A, click on the B, and you just have a radius. Again, you can do change your options if you like and change your colors, um, make it dashed, whatever you like. So we'll leave that uh, the way I have it on screen. Okay, to make a, to construct an equilateral triangle, notice that we're not drawing an equilateral triangle here. We're not doing it freehand. We're constructing an equilateral triangle. So our next step is we are going to create another circle. The second circle is going to have a center at point B and A will be sitting on its circumference. So we'll use the same tools, we'll use the circle tool. Click on B, that'll be our center, and we will click on A to create that second circle. Now we have two circles being shared, they intersect each other, uh, and I would like to create a point I can actually stretch the circles out, make them smaller at this point. If I want to move them, I don't like where they are, I can use the move tool, just drag them across, give yourself more room to work with. At this point, I want to create a point that where the two circles intersect. They intersect at the top and at the bottom. So to do that easily, you can do a freehand. If you're very steady, you can actually create that point. But I like to be accurate, so I make sure the point is at the intersection. So there is a tool for that and it's under the point tool and intersect two objects. So if you collect, highlight the first circle, highlight the second circle, it'll automatically create those points for you at those precise locations. No guessing involved. And those points are stuck. If you try to move those points, you can't because those points are attached to the intersection of two circles. The only way you can move those two points is by either moving point B or moving point A. That's the only way to change it. In fact, that brings me to uh, a good review of the algebra window. If you take a look at the algebra window, notice that you have free objects here. Those are the two points I created. And then you have dependent objects. The dependent objects, point C and point D, those depend on other things. In this case, they depend on the circles that were created. Uh, and notice, by the way, here are the circles themselves over here. So you could actually if you, un if you click on the bubble here, you can hide that circle. In fact, you can highlight any part of your construction just by clicking on 
these bubbles in the algebra window. So the algebra window is quite useful. We're going to use it a lot more in the course later. Uh, and then these circle equations that you're looking at, um, those also become uh, part of our lessons later on in the course. So for this lesson, let's just go back to the uh, equilateral triangle. Uh, and I want to make, now that I have that point up there, I can make a triangle just by using the line segment tool. So use the line segment tool, connect it to point D, connect the other one to point D, and you have yourself a triangle. And again, if you want to change the sides of the triangle, go ahead and do that. A quick way of changing everything at once is by clicking and dragging. That'll highlight more than one thing. And then you can go ahead and change the colors as a group. Uh, you can change the, uh, the size, uh, how thick the lines are, and so forth. I'll leave uh, the picture the way it is and move on to the next step. My next step here is to actually create the angle measurements. So as far as the construction goes, I'm really done with the circles. I really don't need the circles for any other purpose, but we'll leave them on screen for a little while longer just so you can see the relationship of, of where, those, where that triangle is coming from. Okay, now to measure the angles. You go up to the angle, it looks like an angle tool up here, and the first option is angle. That's what we want to use. And GeoGebra is very specific about how it measures angles. It's always in a clockwise fashion. You have to click three points, but they have to be in clockwise. If you go counter, uh, if you go the other way, the wrong way, you'll be measuring the outside angle instead of the inside angle. So for here, you click on D, for example, that's our first point. The second point represents the vertex. That's the angle we're measuring. And the third point will finish the angle. So you need three points to measure the angle. That's how you do it. Notice that I went clockwise. Uh, and then I can just drag that 60. I can't drag it anywhere I want, but I have some flexibility in where I can drag it. So I'll drag it. That looks good to me. So we have a 60 degree angle right there. Um, now we'll go ahead and measure angle A. So angle A is between B and D. So I'll start with B, then A, then D. That's the order you're going to go in. So highlight the angle tool, B, A, and D. And finally do the same thing for angle D. And you have measured the triangle. It has three angles. They're all 60 degrees, equal, equal angular. Now, an equilateral also has the sides that are the same. So all we have to do to show the sides is they're already uh, measured for us. We just have to show them. So over here in the algebra window, side A is one of the sides of the triangle. So if you click on A and you right click on it, you can show the label. Label will give you the name A. Um, but we don't want the name here, we want the actual value. So if you highlight a side, you can go to the, uh, that's two little A's on it, drop that menu down. You can do name, name and value, you can hide it, or you can just show value. In this case, I just want the value. I'm just interested in the number, how long is the side of the triangle. And in this case, it's four and a half units. Um, it, you could change the rounding of GeoGebra by going to Options and clicking rounding. So you could round it to zero places if you like, in which case uh, it's a little less than four and a half, so that's why it's rounding to 4.4. And again, you can change the size. If you change the size of the triangle, it's actually the radius of the circles, the radii of the circles, then you can change the triangles. Let's do that with the other two sides as well. So for this side, we'll go ahead, highlight it. You can do down this drop down menu, click value, and that's gonna measure that side. One other way to do it is you can highlight the segment. You can right click and go to Object Properties. In this window, you have a whole bunch of options you can change just for that line segment. But in this problem, I just wanted to do Show Label. You have those same options that you had before. And pick Value, it'll do the same thing. So now you have all the sides measured. You have all the angles measured. All the sides are the same. All the angles are the same guess what? It's an equilateral triangle, which is good because that was our objective to create that triangle. Uh, and then you can go ahead and stretch it out if you like. And you'll notice that no matter what you do, the angles all stay 60, 60, 60. The sides are all the same size. So you've constructed an equilateral triangle. You didn't draw it, you constructed it. No matter what you do to that triangle, if you drag it, you're always going to maintain those values. 
Okay, the last thing, uh, now let's clean this up a little bit. If you did want to hide your circles, because we don't need the circles for the equilateral triangle, we can go ahead to the side here, just click on the bubbles, that'll hide it, <clears throat> and it'll just leave you with the triangle. Uh, again, you can move the triangle around. If you want to change the way it's oriented, you'll have to use point, let's see, point, I thought point B was the one we used to create it, but... Um, Oh, I'm not selecting the selection tool. So if you do selection tool, then you can see that you can change it. And there we go. And we have a straight point C here down at the bottom. We'll highlight that because the, the circle is intersected in two points. This is the random point. And we'll hide that as well because we don't need that for our construction. And that'll give you a nice picture of an equilateral triangle. Uh, one last thing for this screencast is what if you wanted to color the inside of the triangle you want to make it a little appealing so you can go up here and you can use the polygon tool the polygon tool what it does is if you highlight any points polygon is in closed shape made up of line segments so if I click A B you notice I'm going on top of the equilateral triangle I'm actually making something on top of it it's like a layer C and your first point and your last point are always the same. That's what tells GeoGebra you're done. So now you've created a polygon. Look here at the right hand uh, in the algebra window. It called it poly1. The 11 is the area of the triangle. It actually does the area for you automatically. Uh, I don't like the poly1 name. So let's change that name by going to the algebra window, right clicking on that and renaming it. Let's actually call it triangle a, B, C, that's a much better name. And then we can actually just, uh, oh, um, you can't use spaces. So when you rename it, you can't use any spaces here. So A, B, C has got to go together. There we go. And you can actually drag that to the graphics window. And whatever's on that algebra window will be dragged over to the uh, graphics window, which is very convenient. OK, now for presentations, this font size is very small. Uh, people have, uh, students might have trouble seeing it. So a quick way to change all the fonts at once would be to go up to Options and go to Font Size and just make it anything you want. Right now I have 18, which is a pretty good size for viewing, but you can certainly make that bigger or smaller uh, depending on your preferences. Notice that it also changes the algebra window. So if you make it too big, then you have trouble reading what's in the algebra window. So 18 points seems to be a pretty good size for me. Uh, if you want to change it individually, then you highlight the, the individual properties. Okay, and then also that label right there, if you don't want to see that label, you can right click on it, uncheck show label. So those are the major pieces of GeoGebra. Now we're really going to use this program quite a bit, so it's important that you get comfortable with it at this point. Post up any questions you might have, uh, and then we'll walk you through any troubles.